a cosmonaut becomes the first man to walk in space. No one had ever done it, no one had ever worn a suit outside of their vehicle, and nobody knew what to expect. The Soviets, they always claimed that it was a complete success. The true story stays a Soviet state secret for more than four decades. We are at the infancy of space travel. Disasters were expected. March 18, 1965. Cosmonaut Alexei Leonov is about to make history for the Soviet space program. The space spectacular that they had in their sights was to actually have a cosmonaut get out of the spacecraft and walk in space to actually float in the vacuum of space. This was the space race really heating up now. It's a race the Russians are winning. Alexei Leonov steps out of his capsule to perform the first spacewalk in human history. What NASA didn't know was that Leonov's spacewalk did not go as smoothly as planned, and in fact came close to killing the cosmonaut. Leonov gets outside, he's, he's free of the spacecraft, and he's floating at the end of an umbilical, and he's amazed by the view, he sees the Earth before him. He's waving at the camera as he floats away from the ship. Leonov spends a euphoric 10 minutes floating in space before mission control orders him back to the Voskhod spacecraft. As he approaches the airlock, he realizes he has a problem. Leonov tries to squeeze his body back into this inflatable airlock. But he realizes that in the vacuum of space, his spacesuit has suddenly ballooned the lack of atmospheric pressure in space has caused the air inside his suit to expand. So now he's outside in this inflated, human-shaped balloon, and suddenly all of his joints are stiff. The on-off was also working against the clock. In less than five minutes, the spacecraft will enter Earth's shadow, plunging Leonov into complete darkness, making re-entry into the airlock almost impossible. So he takes really almost a desperate measure and actually lets out some of the oxygen from his suit via a valve on his wrist. Opening his suit in space exposes his body to a rapid pressure change that could cause crippling decompression sickness. By going down in pressure, he risks that some of the nitrogen might come out of solution in his blood, forming bubbles. Decompression sickness can cause total paralysis. If Leonov keeps the suit valve open too long, continued exposure to the vacuum of space can have deadly consequences. What we know about depressurization is all of the liquids that are exposed to vacuum will boil away, freezing the tissue underneath. Mission control realizes something is very wrong. Leonov should be inside the airlock by now. Soviet officials cut the live camera feed that is broadcasting Leonov's feet to millions of viewers around the world. Leonov is getting hotter and hotter because he's overwhelming the cooling system in his suit. And so, of course, that's a risk there of, of actually getting something like heat stroke. Leonov's core temperature rises by a potentially deadly 3.2 degrees. Sweat pools in his boots, filling his suit. If he's not able to depressurize and re-enter the hatch, end of story. You know, that's, that's how the first spacewalk ends with an astronaut death. Leonov's risk pays off. His suit deflates enough for him to fit through the airlock. The ordeal costs him 10% of his body weight. Losing 13 pounds of your body weight in 12 minutes will leave you exhausted, disoriented, and barely able to function. Together with co-pilot Pavel Belayev, he must now prepare to return to Earth. But the Voskhod spacecraft's automatic guidance system is malfunctioning. They will have to manually control the craft during re-entry. And there is only enough fuel for one attempt. They had to fire their retro thrusters at an exact moment. You have to get this right. There won't be any second chances. 
Activating the retro thrusters, they manage to penetrate Earth's atmosphere. The cosmonauts' problems are not over yet. During re-entry, the spacecraft's two halves fail to separate, throwing them into a wild spin. A communication cable that should have detached still links the orbital and landing modules. They are completely out of control, hurtling towards Earth. So as they're descending through the atmosphere, they feel the Gs start to build, and they get up to eight to 10 Gs. With just seconds to spare, the cable burns through, separating the two craft, allowing the landing modules chutes to deploy. They touch down safely, but they land more than 1,000 miles off course in Arctic Siberia. The temperature outside is 22 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Of course, hypothermia and freezing to death can occur pretty rapidly. Wearing damp spacesuits, the cosmonauts endure two whole nights in the open before rescuers reach them. The Soviet regime sells the mission as a complete success, securing their position leading the space race. NASA was again playing catch up. The apparent Russian success makes NASA accelerate its schedule for the first American to walk in space. The original plan called for astronaut Ed White to carry out a safety run in June, two months later than Leonov's first spacewalk. Prior to Leonov's spacewalk, NASA's plan for Gemini 4 was to have Ed White open the hatch, stand up on a seat, look outside, and then sit back down and close the hatch. To catch up with their Soviet rivals, NASA abandons the safety run and changes White's mission to a full spacewalk months ahead of schedule. On June 3rd, 1965, White becomes the first American to walk in space. He spends 23 minutes outside the Gemini 4 module. Ed White's spacewalk was a resounding success, even with the risk NASA took by moving it forward. Ed White does not have to pay the same price as Leonov for his place in history. Ed was floating around thoroughly enjoying it. In fact, Jim McDivitt had to really uh, coerce him to come back into the spacecraft. A NASA probe four billion miles from Earth encounters an unidentified radio signal. What's causing this sound? Where is it coming from? We didn't expect anything like this. 